Now let's go over a cranial nerve examination. Starting out with cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve, basically a sense of smell. So we've got Lindsay helping out. So first off, any changes in your sense of smell? Have you noticed anything? No. Okay, great. So we're gonna test that. So why don't you close your eyes. Okay. You're gonna plug one nostril with your hands. Perfect. And now I want you to take a breath in and smell. Okay, good. Now what does that smell like to you? It smells like coffee. Okay, now plug the other nostril. And we're gonna do this again. So one more time. Good. And what does that smell like to you? Also coffee. Okay, great. So when doing this in clinic, you can use something familiar like coffee or vanilla or even citrus. So that is cranial nerve number one. Now let's look at the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve. And there's a few ways that we're gonna examine the optic nerve, but starting out, we're gonna look at visual acuity. We're gonna use a Snellen chart that we have here in clinic. And because it is a smaller chart, our patient needs to be about 10 feet away. Um, do you wear glasses or contacts? No. Okay, no, so you no. wanna make sure that your patient does wear the appropriate you know, lenses when they're doing this test. Okay, so what we're gonna do, Lindsay, is I want you to look at the chart. Can you see the green line? Yeah. Yeah, so I want you to read the line right below the green line, covering one eye. Okay. Okay. Z, L, P, E, D, T, C. Perfect, now use the other eye, so let's change it there for a sec. Okay. Yeah, same line. Z, L, P, E, D, T, C. Perfect. Now, um, you can uncover your eyes. Next, let's try the first line underneath the red bar there. Can you see that? Yeah. So cover an eye, good, okay. and go for it. D, P, C, Z, L, F, T. Perfect, and let's do the other side. D, P, C, Z, L, F, T. Nice, and now let's try the last line here. Can you see the third line under the red bar? Mm -hmm. Okay, so cover an eye. Okay. Okay, and go ahead. L, D, C, Z, O, T, E. Okay, great. And the other side. L, D, C, Z, O, T, E. Great, that was the 2020 line. Perfect. Okay, so that's the basic uh, test for visual acuity. Next, we're testing the pupillary reflexes as well as examining the eyes visually. So, first off, we're going to look at the patient's eyes. And we're looking at both pupils, and what we're looking for is symmetry, uh, any difference in shape, size, and just overall health of the eyes as we look. Okay, great. And now we're going to shine a light. Is it okay if I shine a light in your eyes? Yeah. So we're going to look at direct and consensual reflexes. So first off, so we come in here, and I'm looking to see if Lindsay's pupil constricts. And at the same time, I'm looking at the opposite eye to see if there's a consensual reaction. Okay, great. So we would do this on both sides. And as you can see, the room has been dimmed slightly. You want to do this in a darker room to be able to, you know, evaluate the pupils better. Now we're going to perform the swing test. Now this is going to basically examine the eyes and try to see if there has been any damage to the optic nerve. So what we do is we swing from one eye to the other. So we're going to Flash the light there, and we're going to swing to the opposite eye, and we go back and forth as we look at the pupillary reflexes there. Good. Now let's check the accommodation reflex. So for this, you're going to have your patient uh, focus on the wall behind me. I'm going to place my finger in front of you, and I'll ask you to look at the wall, and then at times to look at my finger, okay? So look at the wall. And now look at my finger, and at the wall again, and my finger, and one more time, let's look at the wall, and the finger again. Perfect. So what we're examining here are convergence and constriction. Great. Now at this point in the cranial nerve examination, we'd want to perform a fundoscopic exam. We're not going to demonstrate that in this video, however, I will be putting a card at the top right corner of this video that you can refer to and see a fundoscopic examination. Now we're going to test visual inattention. So Lindsay, what I want you to do is you're gonna look straight ahead, okay? And I want you to tell me when you notice one of my hands moving, okay? And just name it according to your side of your body, okay? You ready? Okay. Left. Good. Right. Okay, you cheated on that one. Let's look straight ahead one more time. Left. Good. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Left. Nice. 
Perfect. So that's testing visual inattention. Now let's test the visual fields. For the sake of this video, we're only going to demonstrate one side, but during the course of an actual examination, you would do both sides. So let's have you cover the right eye with your hand. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to cover my left eye. Okay. And now I want you to look straight at my right eye during the whole exam. And let me know when you see my finger moving, okay? No. 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 Good. So that is a basic test for testing the visual fields. Next, we'll be looking at eye movements, the cardinal fields of gaze. And this is going to be testing cranial nerves 3 through 6, the ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens. So this is what I want you to do. You're going to look straight at me. You're not going to move your head, just follow my hands with your eyes, okay? So starting out, I want you to follow. Good. Okay. Now we're going back. Okay. So as I'm doing this, I'm looking for any restrictions in movement, any nystagmus, or any ptosis or eye drooping as well. Good. Perfect. Now we're going to be testing the trigeminal nerve or cranial nerve number five, starting out with the sensory aspect of it. So we're going to test light touch and a focus pinprick or sharp touch. We're covering three zones, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular or V1, V2, and V3 of the trigeminal nerve. So Lindsay, first off, give me your hand here for a second. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's light touch, okay? So close your eyes and let me know when you feel the sensation, okay? I feel it. No. 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 Good. Now, you can open your eyes for a sec. So I'm going to use the back of the reflex hammer, okay? So let me uh, have your hand again. When I poke like that, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the sharp touch sensation, okay? So close your eyes again. No. 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 And no. Great, you can open your eyes. Okay, good, not too bad. Okay, that's so that's the sensory aspect of cranial nerve number five. Now to examine the motor function of the trigeminal nerve, we're going to do a few tests here. So we're checking the muscles of mastication, meaning the muscles of chewing. So first off, we're going to visually inspect and see if there's any atrophy or muscle wasting anywhere. I want you to open and close your jaw a few times. Good, and a little wider. Good. Perfect. So what I'm looking for here is to see if there's any unilateral deviation or something that stands out in terms of movement. So now I'll say clench and relax. Okay. So when I say clench, I want you to clench your teeth. So I'm going to palpate the temporalis muscles. Now clench and relax, clench, relax. Good. So I can feel those muscle bellies uh, constricting here. Now we're going to check the masseter. Good. Clench, relax, clench. Good and relax. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna test uh, motor strength. So I want you to open your jaw slightly. I'm gonna push up, okay? And I want you to resist that movement. So I'm just gonna use my hand. Good. Okay, now I want you to open again. And this time I want you to push into my thumbs. Good, perfect. Okay, great. And then we're also gonna test uh, mandibular reflex here. So I'm just gonna grab my reflex hammer. And this is called the jaw jerk reflex. So I'm going to place my finger here and I'm just going to tap my finger, okay? So you just relax your jaw. Just a gentle tap. One more. Good. Perfect. Now, if the patient history warrants a corneal reflex, that's something you could also do at this stage. Next, let's examine cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. So this is going to be basically testing the muscles of facial expression. So. Um, starting off, can you raise your eyebrows? Perfect. Can you bring them down? Okay. I want you to close your eyes, and I'm going to try to open them, and I want you to resist. Good. Okay, good. Now you can open your eyes. Can you smile? Can you frown? Perfect. Any changes in taste? Uh, no. No. The cranial nerve also supplies sensory to the two-thirds of the tongue as well. Okay. Great. 
So that is looking at cranial nerve number seven. If we notice perhaps a unilateral drooping or something on one side of the face, that may be Bell's palsy, it could also be a stroke. If we were to see bilateral changes, we might think uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Next, we'll be examining cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. And basically what we're looking at is a gross assessment of hearing. So first off, you'd like to, you know, inspect visually the patient's ears, check both sides, see if there's any lesions or something that stands out. And the next part, I'm just gonna stand to one side, Lindsay, and I'm gonna cover one of your ears and I'll be whispering something at two different distances. One a little bit closer, one a little bit further, and then I want you to repeat and tell me what it is that I said, okay? Okay. So I'm just gonna cover this ear here and I'm just gonna whisper something now. And I'm gonna move a little further. Okay, now what did I say? Five and 22. Perfect, okay. nice. So you'd wanna perform this on both sides and uh, moving down the line, we'll be checking out uh, the ears in another way. Now we'll be doing a hearing test involving a tuning fork. So this is called RINS test, and what we're trying to assess is whether uh, bony conduction or air conduction has been affected in any way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna tap the tuning fork, I'm gonna be placing it on the patient's mastoid right behind the ear, and what I want you to tell me, Lindsay, is when you, if you hear, first of all, the vibration, and then secondly, when it stops, okay? And then once it stops, I'll be performing something else with the same tuning fork, so. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap this. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay, tell me when it stops. It stopped. Okay, can you hear this? Yeah. Okay, good. So as you can see, one is bony conduction versus air conduction. And of course, for the purpose of this video, we might be only demonstrating on one side, but all these tests are done on both sides. So we'd after doing the left side, we would move and do the right side. Now the second test for cranial nerve eight utilizing a tuning fork is called the Weber's test. And this one is a quick screen to differentiate between potentially a conductive versus a sensory neural hearing loss. So what I'm gonna do is tap on the uh, tuning fork again. This time I'm placing it in the middle of your forehead and I want you to tell me if you can hear it and if so, does it travel or localize to one side or another or if it's in the middle, okay? okay. So I'm gonna tap on this. Okay, can you hear it? Mm -hmm. And is it more right, left or in the middle? It feels like the middle. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. So one thing I should mention as well is before you start, you know, doing cranial nerve aid exams, you should also ask the patient a few questions, you know, first off, any changes in your hearing, and secondly, if there's maybe been an increase in intensity of hearing, and that'll help you zero in on potentially what the problem is. Now that we've screened for hearing problems with cranial nerve eight, we're gonna actually look at the vestibular part of the vestibulocochlear nerve. So this one, we're using a turning test. Basically, you're gonna have your patient stand, close their eyes, and what I want you to do is just march in place. And I'm gonna observe. Okay, so go ahead, Lindsay. Just keep marching in place for a few seconds. So a normal test would be what we're seeing here. However, if there was a lesion or a problem with the nerve, the patient would start to turn to the side of the lesion. Okay, good. Next, we'll be looking at cranial nerves nine and 10, the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves. In order to do this, we'll be looking at the uvula, the soft palate. We'll have Lindsay here perform a few different tests. So starting out, what I'd like you to do is just open your mouth and I'm gonna turn this on so there's some light. Okay, and now just say ah. Uh. Uh. Okay, good. So what I'm looking for is symmetry, any deviation of the uvula or the soft palate. Okay, next thing, um, I want you to just cough. <coughs> okay, good, just one more time. <coughs> so let's say that there was actually a problem with the vagus nerve. Lindsay wouldn't be able to close her glottis and, and build up that pressure for that slightly explosive cough. It'd be more of just a, <sighs> there'd be air coming through. So that'll help us kind of zero in on whether there's a vagus nerve lesion and that's called a bovine cough. Uh, another thing that we want to do is we're going to listen to the quality of, of Lindsay's voice 
and whether she's able to articulate or not. So if there's dysphonia, that's more of a sound production. That's an actual problem with producing sound and speaking. Whereas if it was a dysarthria, it'd be more of a motor problem. There might be some slurring or fatigue in the speech, and that involves more of the muscles that actually control the movement of the mouth. Okay, so now another part of this is I'm going to give you this glass of water. There you go. So we're going to assess swallowing, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is take a sip, hold it for a sec, and then I'll tell you when to swallow. Okay, ready? Now swallow. Okay, good. And as you can see, there's no difficulty there. Now we'll be testing cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. And this one's pretty straightforward. We're going to test uh, the patient's ability to resist pressure against certain movements, starting out with a shoulder shrug. So are you able to shrug your shoulders up, Lindsay? Okay, and don't rest your hands on your legs so there's no cheating. So shrug the shoulders up. I'm going to push down and you resist. Good. Now, nice and strong and equal on each side. So we're testing both sides. The next one involves head rotation, specifically the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the SCM. So I'm going to place my right hand on the right side of your head here, and I want you to try to turn your head to the right, and I'm going to resist. Good. Okay. And now we're going to do the left side and try to turn. Good. Perfect. Okay. And that's testing cranial nerve 11. And to examine the last cranial nerve, cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, it's basically an inspection of the tongue. So I'm going to stand here in front of you, Lindsay, and I just want you to open your mouth nice and wide and just let your tongue rest. Okay, and what we're looking for is fasciculations or any asymmetry, something that's obvious. Okay, now the next part, you're going to stick your tongue straight out as far as you can. Perfect. And what we're looking for here is any deviation of the tongue. Okay, good, and relax. Now, I'm gonna place my fingertips on your cheek, and when I say go, I want you to push against them with your tongue, okay? So now push, there you go, good. Yeah, good resistance. Okay, we'll do the other side, so let me get the fingers in place. Now push again, good, perfect. Okay, good, nice and symmetrical. And that concludes the cranial nerve exam.